Don't touch it. Do not touch it. Touch what? What are you not supposed to touch? I'm talking about touching the things that are going on in the world that upset you in any way, shape, or form. I'm not talking about touching it physically. I mean, if you're upset about the war somewhere in the world or the politics, right? It's not touching it physically. It is touching it through your reaction. And that reaction is going to be fear, excitement, upsetness, big energy, judging, like, oh my God, or look at what they're doing, all of that. Is it possible to not touch it? I did a little video about it not too long about not too long ago about non-reaction it's kind of the same because it is our reaction that is how we touch something that is happening in the world or at least that seems to be happening in the world we react to it and the reaction is exactly what the world out here needs to be fed by you, by me, by everyone, to stay alive. You're giving it a big meal. The bigger your reaction, the bigger you're touching it through your emotions or through your mind, the more you are feeding it. You're giving it a gourmet meal every single time. And you think you're doing the right thing you think that you are justified in your reaction and you think it's okay to start arguing with others about it who may or may not have that reaction, who may have a different reaction, all reaction to the event, to what other people think about the event, and mostly to your own reaction to it. So I am not saying to suppress it or bypass it because that's very, very different than not touching it from a place of presence. And that is a lot of the work that we all need to do to be able to be present with our inner reaction to what's going on in the world and to what's going on in our own mind, the judgment, the opinions that we have to what is going on in the world. And it's a lot. And we also react to our own unresolved emotions, traumas, memories, future fears. That is what we keep reacting to. And we think it's right. We, we Well, maybe not. We don't really know what else to do because it is so familiar and everybody does it. And then you find somebody to argue with and there's all this energy and it may feel fun and alive for a moment. You might even feel justified, right? And righteous when you meet somebody who has the same reaction as you do. And then you can get a huge double gourmet meal out of it and you feel like yeah I'm right you know and they're wrong this is all reaction and it's not doing anything for you or for the world for your surroundings it's just feeding energy to something you may not like you may want to get rid of you may think is wrong you're adding your energy to it you're feeding it you know big gourmet meal and then a wonderful chocolate cake afterwards like boom and what's going on in the world 
it just thrives even more. And what's happening to you? You are more and more lost in the world. And you're not going to find the peace, the presence, the harmony, which I know is what all of us long for underneath all these layers that we have not met with peace, with harmony, with allowing. That's where we get stuck and we are all part of that. Once you start meeting it in a new way by being present with it, by breathing into it, by making space for it, instead of diving into it and, you know, battle with it. Once you are able to be present with it by breathing into it and allow that breath and your presence to just fill it, hold it. There's a holding it. It's like you become bigger than that reaction. And then it's easier to be present with it instead of being lost in it or identified with it. So when I say, do not touch it, it's a choice. Once you can see that you are doing it automatically by default, you don't even think about it. You just go, Bing, reaction, right? The first step is basically to realize and notice that that's what is happening unconsciously. I wouldn't even say that you are doing it. It's being done and you just, whew, you just go along with it. So just take a moment and many more this day to just start being curious like every time you react. Every time you touch the world, what does it do for you? And the question is always, is that what you want? Do you want to live in that reaction? Do you want to live in that touching it and then being touched by it and impacted by it? <clears throat> is that what you want? If it is, go for it. Have fun with it. Enjoy it. And just forget about what I'm sharing here. If you realize that there might be some truth to that and you, you want to find out more about it, just notice every time you touch the world with a reaction. I read up on things that are going on in the world. I listen to things about what's going on in the world. I don't react to it for the most part. So it's not a matter of, you know, cutting it all off and not, you know, walking around with your, your head in the, the sand. It's being able to meet it with presence. It's very powerful. With stillness instead of reaction. People can feel it even though they may not know what it is, but it does have an impact. And you don't need to worry about the impact. The presence knows. The presence, that oozing I often talk about, it just oozes. Because I'm not holding it back. I'm just like making myself available for that. And then it knows what to do. Sometimes you'll notice that things change like quickly and it's like, wow. And then other times you may not notice anything and you wonder, you know, is it even worth me doing it? Keep doing it and keep not touching and see what happens. Touch your inner experience with a place of presence and spaciousness not with a way of judging yourself or beating yourself up, because then you're still part of that reaction. 
But just start practicing gently, and kindly, and silently. What is it like to just meet these reactions with a place of presence? And just breathe into it. Let's see what happens. Thank you.